Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we are talking Mario and Ferraro, and if he is a fit in David Quinn's defense. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. We are proudly a part of the Locked on Network, where we cover your team every day. Um, Of course, you can find Locked on Sharks wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube as well. And just announced on the SiriusXM app as well. So uh, we're going to be diving into Mario Ferraro as we finish up uh, what I kind of nicknamed Hot Seat Week. And I know what you're thinking, right? Mario Ferraro on the hot seat, this this doesn't really make sense. Uh, So believe me, if you think about it, for a second, I think it makes sense, or at least I think it. I think it makes sense. Um, so we're going to kind of review Mario Ferraro's season. Uh, and then we're going to look at Mario Ferraro compared to the other defensemen on the Sharks, especially comparing the 2021 2022 season versus the 2022 2023 season, and look how the other uh, defensemen fared under David Quinn. And then we're going to end this episode kind of looking ahead with Mario Ferraro and, uh, you know, kind of why he needs to figure things out here as quickly, or if it might be wise for the Sharks to kind of start looking at a world without Mario Ferraro. So uh, let's go ahead and pull up the slides if you're watching on YouTube. Um, Nope, sorry. Uh, Mario Ferraro, defenseman, played 72 games this year, uh, missed 10 games with a foot injury after blocking a shot back in November, um, had four goals, seven assists, 66 shots on goal, had 21-36 um, average time on ice, um, actually down a, a, a touch from what we've seen Mario Ferraro play uh, the past couple seasons. So um, just in past, so this year he played uh 21-36 last year, he played 23 minutes on the nose, and then 20-22, or 20, yeah, 22-26 in the 2020-2021 season. So uh, his lowest uh, time on ice since his rookie season. But um, for the fancy stats, Corsi 4, 45.67%, goals 4, 36.84. So every uh, when Mario Farr was on the ice, uh 36.84% of the goals were for the Sharks. Uh, in other words, uh, basically 63% of the uh, goals scored were for the opposition when Mario Farr was on the ice. As for his uh, athletic uh, card, so again, his salary, uh, he started year one of a uh, three a uh, 0.25 million dollar AAV contract um last season that he got in the off season uh one of my careers kind of first you know orders of business was taken care of uh oh he did that wasn't his first but you know he he definitely went, went wanted to make sure he took care of Mario Ferraro um that was signed in August last year um so yeah he signed a you know four year 3.25 uh, million dollar contract that now runs through the 25 26 season Ferraro's athletic card, um, it's okay. 83 percentile ice time, which we know, I know his his ice time was down a touch this year compared to what we've seen in the past. Um, goals, he was 44th percentile with his goals, 20th percentile with assists, 24th percentile with points. Um, expected goals, 55th percentile. Penalty differential, 74th percentile. So, um, did a, a, a good job of drawing penalties and not taking them um usage 49th percentile defensive uh eighth percentile offense 23 percentile like you know basically his he's we know exactly what uh mario far is here's where it gets ugly on his evolving hockey card um 
Overall, six percentile uh, for him. He played 1,281 even strength minutes uh, this season, which is just uh, right around the defense, you know, top pair of defensive minutes. Um, played 43 minutes on the power play and 209 shorthanded. Again, we know exactly what Mario Ferraro is. Um, his numbers are basically, if you're looking, they're red across the board. They're below your average. Uh, your replacement level player uh, with the exception of penalties. He's very good at not taking penalties. Um, You know, so again, his offense fourth percentile for top pairing defensemen His defense is 13th percentile for top pairing uh, defensemen. So Mario Faro, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, He is miscast right he is playing these tough tough minutes and drawing these tough tough assignments and um he has kind of been forced especially the past couple years to kind of play above his weight if you you know kind of i think if mario faro is your second pairing defenseman you're probably you know if he's if he's your fourth defenseman you're probably feeling pretty good about it but um the past couple seasons basically since his second year he has been Asked too much, uh, asked to, to to do too much, in my opinion. Um, and we'll, we get to kind of comparing defensemen between Quinn and Bugner. Um, I question if Mario Faro is a fit uh, with with David Quinn's system. Now I know Mario Faro is an alternate captain. Um, he is one of you know beloved in the locker room, all that type of stuff, but. Um, Mario Ferraro has plateaued as a player. He's 24 years old. And if you look at Ferraro since he was a rookie season to his second season, you saw a jump, right? Um, Ferraro, we, we, you know, you, you saw him kind of take that jump. But since then, he has, I would, I would actually go as far as regressed as a player. Um, you have not seen the offense that you would have hoped to, that you saw kind of Um, as a younger player Um, and the defense I know again I know he draws the tough he draws the toughest assignments for the Sharks Um, but I think there's other players on the Sharks who could draw better some of these tougher assignments and put Mario Ferraro in a better position and um, you know I, I just I think also again you're paying him 3.25 million dollars um I would expect better numbers. And I know analytics are, are can be really tough for defensemen. Um, you know, and I know I know it's it's harder to look at analytics for defensemen just because of there's so much different stuff going on with them, right? Um, but point what does Mario Ferrar do really well? That's what I'm gonna ask you and let you think about that for a second as we go into take a quick break um and talk about it. A good friend of ours over at eBay Motors. So for a championship team, it's all about making sure every part is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. And um, all you have to do is just add your ride to the My Garage and look for the green check to that way your part will fit all your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in no, uh, the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotor.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right. So Mario Ferrer, what what does he do? Right. You you see his numbers, and they're not great. Again, I know he has tough tough assignments. Right. Um, you were hoping to see some kind of points, especially with Brent Burns. I know Eric Carlson took all the points this season, but you're hoping to see some production, some better production, at least in that department, right? You know, you can look around. You know, I, I think we 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 can say safely say with David Quinn, he knows how to coach defenders, right? Um, you go back to his days with the Rangers, um, Adam Fox, right? 
you really evolved and developed into the Adam Fox, Fox that we know, one in Norris. Um, you know, you look at Tony D'Angelo, terrible person, um, but under David Quinn was a you know a good a good offensive defender, right? As we're gonna see here with the Sharks players, the players under Bob Bugner last year versus the parent players under David Quinn this year, it's almost night and day. But like I said, Mario Ferrer offensively this year, he had 11 points. The Sharks scored more points than they did last season, right? So he had 11 points this year. He had 14 points last year. He had 17 points in 56 games um, in the bubble season. And he had 11 points um, his rookie season. So, and this is the most amount of games he's played. Um, granted, I know 56 games. He played all 56 games, but, you know, he he's basically had the you know the same amount of points that he has a rookie um you got people like to harp on the plus minus with Eric Carlson Mario Farr was a minus 31 again plus minus is a garbage set but like I said earlier when he was on the ice the other team score whenever there was a skull scored you know it was almost 65 percent of the time it was front by the other team um like he did have a power play uh, assist this year. Good job, Mario Ferro. Um, you know, he he's not running your power play, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, looking at some of the other guys, right? Matt Benning, kind of a comparable player, right? Um, you know, known for his defense, not going to provide the, the most offense. But Matt Benning went out and had a career year offensively at 24 points this season. Um, granted, 23 were assists, but had 24 points. Jumped up from 11 last year uh, with Nashville. Um, you know, and that was a career season for him. The other, the only other time he'd been over, uh, uh, he had been double digits, uh, over 20 points his second season. Sorry, excuse me. Um, you know, but career season for Matt Benny, at least points wise. Um, you know, Vlasic, as we'll get to here in a second, like return, like we know Vlasic's not going to be a point getter, but still scored 18 points this season. Um, you know, even Jacob Megna, RIP, he played for the Sharks for 48 games this year, had 12 points, <laughs> one more. So let's look at. Um, some of the kind of differential. So we'll start with Mark Edward Vlasic. And what I did is I pulled Evolving Hockey. I pulled their player cards from this season and then the previous season. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to, to see them here, but I'll do my best to explain. Basically with Mark Edward Vlasic as in the 2021-2022 season under uh, Bob Bugner, he played uh, a little over a thousand or almost 1100 minutes uh, at five on five was 62 minutes shorthanded three minutes on the power play. Again, we know Mark Edward Vlasic is not bringing the offense uh, 17th percentile defender or overall three percentile third percentile offense, 59 percentile defense this season under David Quinn, uh, 1139 minutes time on uh, even strength, 205 shorthanded. Um, again, kind of playing a little bit closer to the second pairing minutes for Mark Edward Vlasic, 77th percentile defenseman, 33 percentile offense, 92 percentile defense. Um, nice, beautiful blues on his on his charts. Again, we know Vlasic is not going, he is not there to provide offense. He's there to be a, a good defender, and he was a good defender. Mark Edward Vlasic had an awesome year, especially if you contrast that, what we've seen the past two or three years under um, Bob Bugner and, and Pete DeBoer. Vlasic had a, if, if Carlson didn't have the season we, he had, we would be singing the praises about, wow, Vlasic really found his game this year. So, all right, Jacob Magna. So all these defenders I looked at, sorry, I forgot to say, um, all played at least 500 minutes for the Sharks last year um, and this season. So in the 2021-2022 season, uh, Vlasic just missed the cut um, from last year, but his numbers are slightly better um, under in the 2021-22 season, but they're pretty comparable. So slight edge to, to the season before, but all right, Jacob Megna. Okay, again, Megna was 20, you know, 28, 29, 30. Like these are, you know, not a developing defenseman. So um, 21, 22 played 752 minutes, uh, even strength, basically 
D1, you know, top pairing defensive minutes, um, two minutes power play, 84 minutes short handed. Overall, 32 percentile, 45th percentile offense, 46 percentile defense. Perfectly cromulent. 22 23. So again, I, this this does include the Kraken, but he played a handful of games. The majority of the games played were with the Sharks. Um, 912 minutes even strength, three minutes power play, 92 minutes shorthanded. Pretty similar, right? 58th percentile player, um, 36th percentile offense, 79th percentile defense. Look at that improvement, right? And then they they traded him for a fourth round pick. Um, Eric Carlson, right? As I have said many, many times, defenses for nerds go score 100 points. Uh, Eric Carlson, right? Last season, um, played 926 minutes, five on five, or uh, even strength, 140 power play minutes, 74 minutes shorthanded. Um, you saw the offense, right? And even the defense was a, a little bit better. Um, but you did see the offense shorthanded. He played, you know, a little bit of shorthanded, not, not too much. Um, good at his penalties. 83 percentile, 93 percentile offense, 26 percentile defense, right? This year, 2022, 20, 1731 even strength minutes. Thank you. Brent Burns leaving. There you go. 275 power play again. Eric Carlson was basically on the power play the entire time. 31 shorthanded. Like David Quinn knows, hey, my my best player, Eric Carlson, is good, is not that great on the on the PK. Um, he's fine, but like let me utilize him in other places to help this team. Right. Eric Carlson went out and had a historical season scoring 101 points. Um, even like his offense, his five on the five offense is, you know, out of this world. Um, 99th percentile offensive player this year. The defense did take a step back. But again, Eric Carlson is there to produce offense. And he did that for the Sharks. He filled his role. Right. 99th percentile defense, 5 percent. Uh, sorry, 99th percentile offense, 5 percentile defense, 99th percentile off, uh, overall. That gets us to Mario Ferraro. So I'm going to start from the beginning and work my way. So 1920, his rookie season, 22 percentile, um, played a little over 1,000 minutes that year, 22 on the power play, 56, you know, 22 percentile, 24th percentile offensive rank, 40th percentile defense. And this is basically playing between the second and third pair minutes, right? 22, 21, the bubble season, Mario Farr really kind of took that big step. 55 percentile for him um, playing a little under 1,500 minutes, even strength, uh, 86 minutes power play, 231 minutes shorthanded. But you kind of you saw the offense at least start to grow 40th percentile 61st percentile defense then the crater 21 22 1228 minutes even strength um 34 power play 166 shorthanded 21st percentile player, 17th percentile offense, 31st percentile defense. And then, like I said, last this last season, 22, 23, 6th percentile player, um, playing about this or a little about the same, um, even strength minutes, but 6th percentile player, 4 percentile offense, 13th percentile defense. Mario Ferraro has regressed hard, hard the past couple seasons. And the Sharks are on the hook for another $3.25 million for the next three seasons for him. Before we continue with Mario Farr and what the Sharks should do with him, or if we're maybe making too much out of it, do want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Sharks your first listen. Um, again, Part of the Lockdown Network, your team every day. 
If you want to be an everydayer, all you got to do is just come back and check me out next week. Next week is going to be, we're going to be discussing all things draft next week. So we have um, two draft profiles coming up next week, one with Chris Peters. Um, so you're going to have two draft profiles. We're going to have a uh, reaction to the draft lottery, kind of discuss what, if, if the Sharks win, what happens. We're going to reacting kind of the fallout of the draft lottery. Uh, we're going to be talking trade ups. If the Sharks want to try to trade up with that devil's pick, um, where, how far can that devil's pick and a second, their second rounder get them in the draft and where would that kind of put them in range? So plenty of fun stuff to talk about next week. So make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, uh, you can subscribe on YouTube as well. All right. So we looked at Mario Ferrar, right? We, we saw progress to the second season. Second season was his best season. And then we've seen a crater. And, you know, that, that makes me believe that, especially with David Quinn, right? We, we saw Vlasic get better. We saw Jacob Megna get better. Uh, you know, we saw, uh, we saw basically every shark who was here under Bob Bugner and played at least 500 minutes. Every shark get better under David Quinn and his system, but not Mario Ferraro, right? Mario Ferraro has progressively gotten worse. And, Again, I, I think Mario Farr is asked to do too much. That's my my first thing. But I also just think Mario Farro isn't a top tier defenseman. I think he's like I said, if he's your fourth defenseman, you're probably feeling okay about it, pretty good. But on the Sharks, he has been asked to be kind of the leader when it comes to being a defensive defenseman. And um, I think the Sharks, if they are smart. I think they should look to part ways with Mario Ferraro. Um, this season, the Sharks had legitimate offers for Mario Ferraro. Shang Peng uh, reported this. They had some very intriguing offers, but they did not move. Um, if I am Mike Greer and you look at all the Sharks, all the, the pieces that the Sharks have added to their blue line, right? Um, you have Nikolai Knizhov coming back from an injury. You know, he's going to have a full offseason to just train and not rehab. You have Henry Thrun, um, who David Quinn loves, right? He, he said, I'm going to play the crap out of him. He played the crap out of him. He made Team USA for the upcoming World Championships. Um, I have a feeling David Quinn's going to play the crap out of him there, too. And give him that's kind of a extended taste, right? This is Henry Thrun's going to get to get an inside track to win a job in with San Jose coming out of the season. Right. Um, and again, he's 22. He's going to have to go through a full season, but you have to be really intrigued with what you saw. Right. Matt Benning, you just signed to a three year, 1.25 million. Would you rather Matt Benning or Mario Ferraro at their cost? Right. Sign me up for Matt Benning. You know, we talked about regime Shimmick, who's probably going to be, you know, lo- my, looking over his shoulder. Okay. You have Jacob McDonald, who looked pretty solid as a bottom six, uh, is a bottom pairing defenseman, right? And then if you need some flexibility to play him at wing. And if Eric Carlson's back and Mark Edward Vlasic, who says he wants to play with Carlson next year, and those guys looked pretty, you know, they, they got a little bit of a run at the end of the season. Or if you want to put Kanijov back with Carlson, like we saw during Kanijov, again, I just think there's better options right now than Mario Faro in his $3.25 million deal for the next three seasons. And I just, I don't know if he's a fit with David Quinn in his system under, you know, Bob Bugner, right. We, we saw him kind of becoming the Brent Burns, you know, working with Brent Burns and kind of being that block shots and, uh, you know, try hard guy. But I, I, I just, I don't see where Ferraro fits in here, especially with a, a team that is going to that is going through a rebuild, right? Um, I know Ferraro is only 24, but the dude's already logged a ton of miles with him, and he's starting. You know, we've seen the past couple seasons, you know, fluky injuries, yes, blocking shots, um, but right, puck to the face, missed some games there with his with his mouth, um, blocked a shot, you know, hurt his foot last season, missed 10 games. I would try to strike while the iron's hot and try to see if you can get something really valuable for Mario Ferraro. Like if you had a second round pick for Mario Ferraro, right? 
would it would so that that's kind of my feeling. So I don't think anything is going to happen. But if you're Mike Greer, you have to be just kind of looking and continuing to take those calls. And if someone blows you away with an offer, um, I think you're going to you have to pull the trigger with it uh, for with Mario Faro. So um, again, I. I don't know if the hot seat is the, but I think we need to see something more out of Mario Ferrara. We can't just continue to see the same old Mario Ferrara going out there um, and not being as good defensively as people think and not providing you any offense. It's kind of the Noah Gregor thing, right? That we talked about yesterday. Um, you got to do something. And like I said, I know he's an alternate captain. He's, you know, a, a great guy in the locker room. All that stuff. And, you know, the Sharks feel like they found something with him. But at this point, do we think Mario Ferraro is going to kind of go back to being the guy we saw as a rookie in his second season? Um, or is this just the Mario Ferraro we're going to get? And I think this is just the Mario Ferraro we're going to get. And three point, that, this Mario Ferraro at $3.25 million isn't worth it to me. So especially when you're already paying Vlasic $7 million. And Eric Carlson in his $11.5 million contract. Um, I think that money could be spent elsewhere, or you can look at some of your younger internal guys that you think can uh, develop, or you can just find guys like Jacob McDonald who cost you know, the vet men to kind of come in and do 90% of the job type of situation. So um, Mario Faro needs – this season is a big season for Mario Faro to try to – see if he can continue to grow and develop and not and kind of stop this regression that we have seen from Mario Farah. So um, that's going to be it for me this week. Um, so if you missed out any of the episodes, right, we had a uh, draft profile with Tony Ferrari. Uh, we talked about uh, Le- trading Kevin LeBanc. Uh, we talked about Redeem Shimmick is going to be out of a job. Talked about Noah Gregor and the boys are coming for Noah Gregor to take his job. And then, of course, we talked about Mario Ferraro um, as well. Going to be back next week um, to talk all things draft, including trading up, fall, uh, reaction to the um, to the lottery, pray, pray to the uh, ping pong balls. Um, so plenty of stuff. Make sure you guys are sticking around wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can watch on YouTube. You can also follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Make sure you're checking out some of the other Amazing shows out there. You got Locked On Warriors, Locked On uh, A's, Locked On Giants, Locked On 49ers, Locked On Sacramento Kings. Hi, Matt. Um, But yeah, until next week, bye, friends.